A particle has an acceleration as a function of time, that is, the initial acceleration a0 minus a constant b times t. We also know that at t equals to 0, the acceleration is a0, the velocity is v0, and the position is at the origin, x equals to 0. And we want to find the velocity as a function of time and the position as a function of time. We have done problems with the position as a function of time given. To find the velocity, we have to take the time derivative of x. To find the acceleration, we take time derivative again. Now we are given the acceleration as a function of time. To find the velocity, we have to do the reverse operation of derivative, which is integration. So we integrate a dt to get velocity. To find the position as a function of time, we integrate the v dt. So to find the velocity as a function of time, we do the integral of a dt, which means we're integrating this a0 minus bt. We can take care of these one term at a time. So at first, I have the constant initial acceleration a0. And this is really a0 times t to the zeros because t to the zeros is 1. So the constant coefficient a0 stays right there. When we integrate t to the zeros degree, we get t to the first degree because we gain 1 degree of power. But we'll have to remember to multiply this by 1 over the new exponent, 1 over 1 right here. So minus b, a constant coefficient, times this is t to the first degree, which means that we're going to get t to the second degree, and that we have to multiply this by 1 over 2. Now, in a problem like this, there is actually one more term for us to take care of. This a0 minus bt is also a0 minus bt plus 0. And when we integrate 0, we get a constant. Usually, people write a lowercase c for this constant. So we write a plus c over here. This makes sense because when we take the derivative of a constant, we get 0. To find out exactly how much this constant c equals to, we use the boundary condition or initial condition provided in the problem. So we are given that at t equals to 0, v equals to v0, which means if we plug in t equals to 0, this velocity as a function of time should equal to v0. This means uh, t equals to 0 here, here, this 0 minus 0 plus c equals to v0, which means the c, the constant c, must equal to v0. Therefore, the velocity as a function of time will be a0 times t minus b over 2 times t squared plus v0. And this will be the answer. Now let's find the position as a function of time, which means we have to integrate the velocity, which means we'll integrate this. a0 t minus b over 2 t squared plus v o. And again, we will do it one term at a time. The a0, the constant coefficient, stays right there. Then that this is t to the first degree, which means we get t squared. But we have to remember to multiply by 1 over 2. And then we have minus b over 2. That's the constant coefficient. When we integrate t squared, we're going to get t cubed. And we have to remember to multiply by 1 third. And then plus v0. This will be the same as v0 times t to the zeros, because t to the zeros is 1, so v0 stays right there. When we integrate t to the zeros, we gain 1 degree of power, and we get t to the first, and then we do 1 over 1 here. Now, what do we have to remember to do? This is the same as the thing plus what? 0. And when we integrate 0, what do we get? we get a constant. And I'm just going to write c. And how do we find the c? We use the boundary condition. At t equals to 0, the position should be 0. So if I plug in t equals to 0, 
this whole thing should equal to zero. So be zero plus c equals to zero. This time the c is zero, which means that the position as a function of time is a naught over two t squared times t squared minus b over six times t to the third plus v o t and plus zero. So this is the position as a function of time.